Excelsior fight fans and welcome to Fist Things First. Recently, light heavyweight king Bad Chad Dawson was defeated by first round knockout in just 76 seconds by Canada's Adonis Stevenson. I had the opportunity recently to speak with Dawson's very first boxing trainer, Mr. Brian Clark of Ring One Boxing in New Haven, Connecticut. Ring One is an inner city gym located on Congress Ave in New Haven and it plays a role in mentoring and shaping the lives of many inner city youth. Brian Clark has been a developmental trainer for more than 20 years and was the original trainer of Bad Chad Dawson. We spoke to him about the loss, the defeat of Chad and their own volatile history. But have a listen to what Brian Clark had to say. You know, it's weird. I was looking at the fight, and it, it's strange how you, you, as you're developing a fighter, you've got to work through certain things and try and change little stuff. And it, make, make that changes, adjust. And um, Chad used to have problems with his feet, and it was, it was corrected years ago. And for almost all fighters, things are muscle memory. you got to go through what happens over and over and over again to get that muscle memory. And um, so I was watching... I was watching that tape, I was like, man, this kid stepping forward, dropping his front hand before he jabs, every time, every time. And this is something that had been corrected at, by the end of his amateur career. Everything's about little repetitious things. This is a habit that Chad has, Chad has gone back to two or three bad habits that he had years ago that had been, that had been adjusted and corrected. But he split back to them. And people never noticed it. He drops his left hand before he throws it. He takes this little step and he drops his front hand before he jabs. You go back and watch the fight. Now it's for your own sake. There's little things. You watch the way his toe pops. If his, if his front toe is popping, you know, like lifting off the ground, you're not, you're not timing it. It's just not going to happen. But if it's, Hawaiian, if it's what I used to call probing, where it kind of sticks out three, four inches, three, four inches, and stop, he's all done. And the guy that can beat Chad is the guy that changes distance very quickly. Pascal, Ward, obviously Stevenson. You know, that's the key to beating Chad. You know, realistically, not blowing my own horn, Chad's fundamentals have, have slipped tremendously. In, in over the years, um, I think the last time he really looked good was in the first Carver fight. I really thought John Scully was going to be a good match for him based on the fact that, you know, is there, is there someone you could think of in your life that you knew when you were a little kid that you looked up to? As you get older, you still look up to that person because you looked up to him as a little kid. And that's the way John, when, we were, when Chad and his brothers were younger, we used to travel with John and his team all over the country. Like, they would follow us and we would follow them all to all these national tournaments. It would be us because we have pictures of, of, of shaving cream fight and war gun fight that you would not believe. Okay? And that was, that was us and Scully. So I really thought John was going to be a good, a good mix for Chad because of that. Because of, you know, when Chad was 13, 14, he always looked up to Scully. So I really thought it was going to be a good match. And, you know, it, it's, I mean, Chad, realistically, Chad has, Chad has screwed over so many people during his life that, that he burned an incredible amount of bridges. Like, we don't, we don't talk at all. I've got nothing to say with that. He's never, ever acknowledged me, ever. I spent seven and a half years developing that kid. I had Chad for seven pro fights. He never lost one round on any judge's scorecard ever. So you can say whatever you want, but my job was done. I, I, I developed everything in Chad. Chad was an afterthought in his father's eyes. You kidding? It was Dominique and Little Ricky. I was, I was the only person that thought Chad was going to do anything. And it took years, Alex. It took years. Chad once, when he was an amateur, he once, he once lost five fights in a row, six out of seven. But there was this little something under there that you could see. But, uh, <clears throat> no, as I, I, to be honest, I consider Chad my biggest failure. He never graduated high school, and, he, and he's not a very good human being. You know, I don't, I don't, if 
I did this for money, I'd be the biggest asshole alive because you know how I live. <laughs> <laughs> you know, money, money is not my goal. I've got one of my kids just graduated from college. I've got two people in the military right now. You know, one of them's in college. That's my goal. Dad has made millions of dollars and he's got nothing. You know, I, I feel bad. I mean, I, I don't... Part of me feels bad. Part of me is just fucking kill us. Uh, do you think he's done? Or do you think... Yeah. I mean, everybody seems to be saying he's done. He's done. Well, think about this. Dad was never very marketable. Um, it actually, it's weird because when he was in the early stages of his career, at that point, he was marketable. I mean, would that have, would that have transcended into the high-level stuff? I, I don't know. But Chad hasn't sold out shit in a long time. His fight with Diop was the lowest, lowest, lowest um, paper you buy of all time. So, I, I think... <laughs> I think for a lot of reasons it should be over. I, I really do. For his own safety. There is always going to be an aspect of me who does give two shits about the kid, even though I shouldn't. Um, but, no, he's, he has, he's, he's not marketable. And he, he still is a high risk. Training Chad was, uh, Chad was a dream to train. A nightmare to keep him together. When he's in the gym, oh my God, Alex, he, you can, he can do things that are just amazing. He really can. I mean, one, one time Al Bernstein said, Chad Dawson has the best double hook in all about it. That, that came from a game we used to play. We used to play a game with the pads where he would throw four to six hooks in one motion across. Oh, it was incredible. It was fun. When I, when I turned Chad Pro, I, I told Birchfield, I told you, I said, hey, I want 500 guys in there. I do not want these one and five guys, two and 14. I don't want that. If a two and old guy at this third fight, and James Orso, I think it was his fourth fight, he called three of three guys, he stopped them. And this is what I knew of this kid the big guy. He comes back to the corner, he looks at his crime, and they bring someone to fight. Instead of, instead of being all happy, he wanted a challenge. John, John Schroeder and I were talking about this yesterday. I said, Dad, you know that you know that carnival game where you try to climb up the net? Okay? That's what it was like. I'm going right up here, I'm going to get that prize. All right, I flipped over. All right, I'm going to go wide, spread out. I'm going to flip over. Okay, I'm going up. No, I'm going to go up slow. You, you would get within a week of a fight and something would always happen. Always. It was crazy. It was killing me. It was killing me. The money, money, make money. I was getting fucking killed more in the pros. Oh, God, the tickets I was buying, the bullshit I was dealing with with the parents. Oh, it was nuts. Nuts. So for me to say I feel really bad about with the minds, no. Do I feel good about it? No. Oh, no. You raise a kid from a little kid. You you watch all this stuff. You expect certain things. But no, the shit I went through with Alex was just incredible. Now we all have our problems. You know, I got my anyone anyone in the right mind would drop Chad Dawson when he was fifteen or sixteen years old. But I'm not in my right mind. <laughs> <laughs> and what kills me the most, you've never ever given me any acknowledgement or credit. I'm certainly far from perfect. I always knew there was something inside of him that could be great. The last time he was spectacular was uh, the first Harvard fight, not the second one, the first one. That's trainer Brian Clark on light heavyweight Bad Chad Dawson and his knockout defeat to Adonis Stevenson. Clark's Ring One Boxing is a nonprofit organization in New Haven, Connecticut that introduces at risk inner city youth to the rigors and discipline of the sweet science. As to Bad Jihad Dawson, he certainly faces an uphill climb if a comeback is his intention.